Ibrahim, the fifth sultan of modern Johor. Since ascending the throne in 2010, his popularity has grown to rock star proportions. This popular sultan has never had an official coronation because technically a sultan doesn't need a coronation to be recognized as ruler of his state. But now, Sultan Ibrahim is ready to give his people the spectacle they deserve, a royal coronation, the first in Johor in 55 years. It is not just a coronation for the Sultan of Johor, it is the crowning glory for the state of Johor. It will be spectacular, it will be glamorous, and it won't be easy. Ah, but I know I was a little bit too big. So I went on a diet called GM Weight Loss Program. Because a royal coronation means making changes, it means managing men and machines. This one's 104. And all this while being a sultan and a dad. This is the story of Johor's countdown to Sultan Ibrahim's coronation. Johor is the southernmost state in Malaysia. Once it was known as Ujang Tana, or Land's End. Today it is Malaysia's second most populous state. At its head is Sultan Ibrahim. The Sultan spends a surprising amount of time out of his palace, and today is no exception. He's on his way to visit one of his plots of land, developed in a manner most fitting of Johor. I consider myself as a planter. Oil palm is my favorite. I learned through the hard way. I learned through mistake. I had to ask questions because I did not go through any courses. But my children, I'm going to send them to Felda. They better learn about oil palm. That oil palm is what gives them food to eat every day. So they better learn. Palm oil is one of the engines of Johor's growth. Vast oil palm plantations stretch across the state and provide employment for about 75,000 people. I have about 70,000 acres. Only 50% is planted. The others are not planted yet, but slowly I'll plant. I like to plant because I don't like to borrow money. You see, you take a loan from the bank, you can't sleep at night. So I will use the profit to replant. On the eastern fringe of the city is Istana Pasir Palani, the palace of Sultan Ibrahim. Built in 1911, the palace has been his residence since becoming the crown prince of Johor. Today, the palace is buzzing. The Sultan is getting ready for a royal road tour, and his entourage is going with him. But before leaving home, the Sultan has to check everything. palace on the other side of town, but he still calls this one home. Pasir Pelangi, I could see a lot of people. People are easy to come and see me. Even when the guards stop people from coming in, I said, no, let them in. I want to see them. Today's inspection is a quick one because the Sultan has a busy day ahead. 
Johor is a constitutional monarchy, and the Sultan's powers are limited. But it's still the Sultan's business to know his people, to see them, and be seen. In 2001, when Sultan Ibrahim was still the crown prince, he started an annual royal tour of Johor with his family. Today is the start of his 2014 tour, but so far, there's no sign of his family. Sultan Ibrahim has six children. Four will be joining this road tour. They're taking their time, but eventually they do show up. <laughs> gathered and the royal vehicle is ready to roll out this year for the first time the sultan is going to visit all the districts in this custom-built bus the beauty about the bus i can stop anywhere and sleep i can go to a kampung but depends kalau jalan kita kecil tak lepas bus ni besar i mingle with them at night i sit outside they all come Johor's population is concentrated in the south and central parts of the state. But on this four-day tour, the Sultan visits as many places as he can, including the small agricultural towns and villages. The Sultan covers about 250 kilometers and makes five stops each day. They give me stamina, everything. And I look forward to every, every trip I look forward. Even the Salatar people come to entertain their sultan. Through the ages, the Johar Sultans developed a close relationship with the seafaring Salatar. After Singapore separated from us, they came to Johor and stayed at Pasir Pelangi on the palace ground. This is Orang Selatan. They call me Bapak. All of them. So Orang Sli in Johor, they have a father. for people along the route to show the best their region can offer. It's not just for the Sultan, though. With the media following him everywhere, it's a good opportunity to get some publicity for their products.
In four days, the Sultan covers 858 kilometers and visits 22 locations. It's a massive undertaking, and thankfully, he doesn't do it alone. After the late start on day one, the Sultan's family is getting into the swing of things. I always tell them, you know, grassroots is very important. So go down to the people. And okay, it doesn't go. The Sultan is usually joined by state officials on his annual road tour. So they follow me. What you got, yeah? When I do my Kabarima road tour, they follow me. Any problem, there and then, they, I will address the problem to them. Solve the problem. If I can go down, why not them? Johar's top official, the state minister, is a former schoolmate and just as sporting. Everybody must. Jangan lagi lu pandang pandang belakang ni. Everybody in your is responsible to to progress though. Sultan Ibrahim clearly takes his royal responsibilities seriously, but he's never been officially crowned. Though a coronation ceremony is not mandatory, it symbolically seals the sovereignty of the Sultan. It also officially confirms his consort as the Queen of Johor. And that is good enough reason for Sultan Ibrahim to order a royal coronation for the first time in 55 years. Sultan Ibrahim has important duties to perform as the Sultan of Johor, like opening the state assembly. While the state minister administers Johor, the Sultan retains a prominent advisory and consultative role. But when you knock off work, you just need to be a dad. Today, he's heading the cheerleading for eldest son in his favorite sport. The Crown Prince, Junku Ismail, has poured his passion and energies into football in Johor. After buying a club, He's led it to the top of Malaysian football in just a couple of years. His club, JDT, is now the pride of Johor. And the Sultan is a proud father indeed. He loved football. I think his life is football. And polo. I must say he's done well. Within the last two years, what is JDT today? That's one thing I give credit to him. He's done well. I don't think I can do it. Because his passion was to buy the In 2015, the club, also known as Southern Tigers, lifted the Malaysia Super League title and charity shield. JDT's achievements make it one of the most recognizable brands in Johor. The Crown Prince is supported by his family in making football a favorite game in Johor. And lately, a certain young lady has been cheering him on. His private office, 
Sultan Ibrahim prefers to conduct his meetings outdoors. These days, the coronation is always on the agenda, and the Sultan wants to know everything. Updates come from his state minister and officials. How many guests have confirmed their attendance? What state is the venue in? But the coronation is more than just a big party in a palace. It's a state function, which means planning road closures, organizing security details, and today, approving the designs of district flags. Sultan Ibrahim wants all of Johor's districts to have flags and fly them at state functions, including his coronation. Advising him on the suitability of the designs is Datuk Rahim Ramli. As president of the Council of the Royal Court, it's his business to know everything about Johor's royal customs. We are the first state uh, to have a crown for its ruler. That was way back in 1886. The crown itself is a manifestation of the of the innovative nature of the late Sultan of Baka. With his coronation, uh, there will be a revival of all the old traditions that were practiced during the times of Abu Bakr, during times of the coronation of the previous rulers, right up to now. But though Datuk Rahim has access to the state's records, when it comes to restoring the venue of the coronation, he still needs to turn to somebody else. This is Istana Vaisar Johor, the Grand Palace of Johor, where Sultan Ibrahim will be crowned. Built by the first Sultan of modern Johor, Sultan Abu Bakar in 1866, this Anglo-Malay style palace was also his home. His descendants use it for ceremonies, including investitures, state banquets and coronations. It's starting to show its age, and the Sultan has ordered it restored to its former beauty. The question is, what is its former beauty? Only one man remembers. Jadi tuanku sendiri menitahkan supaya kerja-kerja baik pulih ni ataupun konservasi ini dilaksanakan secara menyeluruh ke atas bangunan ini. Sebenarnya dulu yang mahu melihat tuanku dia bukan hanya melawat, tapi dengan pengalaman dan juga mana dia membesar dia daripada kecil sampai ke sekarang ni melihat perkembangan di sana besar ni, jadi banyak mananya input-input ataupun kalau nak dikatakan sebagai bahan rujukan, jadi dulu yang mahu melihat tunggu tuanku adalah bukan rujukan yang utama lah, tak ada banyak masih mengingati ya. So with some deep memories and lots of hard work, Istana Besar Johor is restored, ready for the big day. With the coronation drawing closer, invitations are being sent. The average very important guest gets a nice card. But extremely important guests get an extremely important invitation created here at the Royal Department. First, the invitation is typed in Jawi, which is Malay, written in a modified Arabic alphabet. This style of writing is at least 700 years old. Today, the Sultan's office continues to use it for religious and cultural administration. The invitation is rolled, then placed in a scroll holder with the royal insignia. And for really extremely important guests, Sultan Ibrahim delivers the invitation in person. After two hours in his private jet, the Sultan arrives in the Kingdom of Brunei. 
From there, it's a short car ride to the palace of the Sultan of Brunei. The close relationship between Johor and Brunei was first started by the Sultan's father, the late Sultan Iskandar, and carried on by Sultan Ibrahim. With the invitation delivered, that's one item on the to-do list successfully completed. But there are so many more things to do, and the days to the coronation are counting down. These are Malaysian commandos, and Sultan Ibrahim is their colonel-in-chief. Having been trained in the military himself, the Sultan knows what they're capable of, but he's got another role in mind for these skilled fighters. He wants them to be waiters at his coronation banquet, providing both service and security. Number one is their service. Number two is the security. Yeah? Because they fight. They fight tak payah guna jata pun kadang. The commandos begin their training with briefings on the finer points of Malaysian royal dining etiquette. Mula-mula datang runcit-runcit. Sebab tu saya kena-kena bina sikap kan. Dia tak interest. Sebab bila dia dengar, dia kurang. Tapi bila kita tarik sikit, end up bila dia kumpul semua, kita baru train. Yang betul. So, dia orang feel macam, wow, something new. Nak kan sebelum kena kepala? Then, it's time for Chef Razak, more used to culinary students than commandos, to give them practical lessons. Masa kita training tu, bila take five years, four. Eh, mana orang semua is gone. Also, with the men coming from different units, his concern is to find common ground, but he found an easy solution. Saya tanya, saya tanya mula, boleh ke dia orang ni kumpul je satu? Cuma dengan dia orang, kita tak boleh tegur, kita hanya bagi order. Dia receive order. The commandos are finding mastering dining etiquette tougher than fighting the enemy. After weeks of training, Chef Razak's confident they're up to scratch. But they have yet to be tested in a real situation. So Sultan Ibrahim plans to do just that. A real-life, full-dress rehearsal for his new table staff. The Sultan had started restoring the royal palace, Istana Besar, in 2012. On the 8th of November 2014, with the restoration complete, it's witnessing its first grand event, the wedding banquet of the Crown Prince of Johor. I was in Moha, and he came quite early. He took a moment to never come early to see me in the morning. So, he came, and he was a bit quiet. So I thought, that was it. So when I was walking back to my room, he was still following me. Then I think maybe he wants to talk something. In the room, he says, Bah, dulu bah dia kata, kalau nak cari istri, biar ada restu mak bapak bu berkat. I said, you have it already. Go ahead. The Sultan also had some fatherly advice for his eldest son, who is heir to the throne of Johor. I told him one thing very simple. You cannot make a queen overnight. You don't expect your wife to be Gajazari. It takes a long time. You need how to learn manners, protocol, palace etiquette. 
and the best person to learn from is Wendy Zarif. That's what I told him. The who's who of Southeast Asian dignitaries is here. At this wedding reception, the commandos will have their first induction into the world of royal table service. and guests attend the wedding dinner, but only the select few are dining at the royal table. It's customary for Malaysian royalty to eat in private. So from the time the first course is served, the commando waiters are on their own. The coronation is drawing near, and preparations are in full swing. Istana Besar, the palace where the ceremony will be held, has been restored. Inside Istana Besar, the coronation team has gathered for a rehearsal. Datuk Rahim, the noted authority on Johar royal traditions, is taking charge of this. Together with the Sultan's trusted circle, he has to ensure the heritage is carried on. Uh, I think that His, His Majesty's uh, um, intention was to let the Raya, especially Johor people, know that we live by tradition. Without tradition, we don't have the history and probably our civilization will be different. Meanwhile, the Sultan's Grand Chamberlain is overseeing the overall operations of the ceremony. The Mufti, or the State Cleric, has a prominent role in the highlight of the ceremony. He will place the crown on the Sultan and diadem on his consort. One misstep during the ceremony itself could turn celebration into disaster. A disaster that will be broadcast on national TV. Meanwhile, outside the palace, the Johor military forces are carrying out Guard of Honor rehearsals. The JMF is Johor's private army under the command of the Sultan. With the Crown Prince as commanding officer, their normal job is the royal family's security. But now, they have been given another assignment. JMF telah memulakan latihan selepas Duli Yang Maha Mulia Tuanku mengisiarkan tarikh 23 hari bulan Mat sebagai hari kemukotaannya dan saya rasa lebih daripada 2 bulan kita dah buat latihan. The JMF was established in 1885 by Sultan Abu Bakar to complement the police. They're usually the guard of honor and perform other duties in Johor royal ceremonies, including the coronations of Sultan Abu Bakar in 1886, Sultan Ibrahim in 1895, and Sultan Ismail in 1960. All were held at Istana Besar. Captain Jalaluddin has served for 33 years, and he has been tasked to lead his men for this coronation. Seramai 105 orang anggota pegawai dan lain-lain pangkat telah terlibat dalam perbarisan kawalan kehormatan. Dan seramai 35 orang anggota panjaragam mengiringi isyadat tersebut. The JMF will act as guard of honor twice during the coronation upon the Sultan's arrival and before his departure. 
Because they're practically kicking off the ceremony, any timing mistakes will have knock-on effects, potentially derailing the entire ceremony. And just as they're trying to work out a tricky bit of choreography, guess who arrives for a spot check? He's very meticulous. My son knows what's going on everywhere. He pays great attention to detail. Everything has to be just so. Since he's already on the spot, the Sultan decides he and his son should take part in the rehearsal. <laughs> Johor last witnessed a coronation in 1960. That was Sultan Ismail, Sultan Ibrahim's grandfather. Then his father, the late Sultan Iskandar, skipped the ceremony because it's not compulsory to be crowned once the Sultan has been installed. But the coronation has significant symbolism for Johor. The crown also symbolizes um, the sovereignty of Sultan Obaka and, of course, to the present Johor rulers. At the same time, the coronation is important for Sultan Ibrahim's consort. As a princess from the Perak royal house, she will officially be known as the Queen of Johor after she is crowned. I suppose it's meaningful because it's been part of the tradition from Sultan Abu Bakr onwards, and they've always won the crown. So there's that history that goes with it. Some of the best chefs in Malaysia have gathered in the palace kitchens. They've prepared a menu for the coronation banquet, but it's not going anywhere without the Sultan's approval. So today, the Sultan will taste the food and hopefully he won't make any changes. The man feeling the heat is Chef Joe. He's worked in five-star hotels and as culinary advisor to many corporations. But can he deliver a meal that meets Sultan Ibrahim's expectations? After all, the Sultan and his royal guests have dined on some of the finest cuisines. So he's proposing a five-course menu featuring some of the finest ingredients, including caviar and Alaskan king crab. But they will pick what they want. Meanwhile, it falls to Chef Razak to organize and manage the 25 chefs who are delivering the goods. And hovering over it all is the comptroller of the royal household. He's watching just how much is being spent on this no-holds-barred banquet. Among the hardest dishes to prepare is the deceptively simple steak, as it depends on absolutely accurate temperatures and timing. Let's go, let's go. Oh, yeah, I think. Angus. I think we'll eat. Uh, over the... Oh, yeah. Are you in? Yeah. What's this? 
When all the dishes have been delivered, the Sultan delivers his verdict. And it's all good to go. are in full swing. The waiters have been trained. The menu has been set. The venue has been restored and the Guard of Honor is rehearsing regularly. Even while all this is going on, the Sultan needs to find time to keep an eye on his various other projects. As Johor is a constitutional monarchy, the Sultan doesn't have direct control over state public policy. Nonetheless, his concern for his people motivates him to look for ways to help. On a visit to Northeast Johor, he had a brainwave. There's nothing you're missing. I want something you're missing. You see development in Johor. It's only Johor Bahu, Johor Bahu. We have forgot about other districts. The Sultan was eager to build something in Mersing. Something that would attract visitors and boost the local economy. The question was, what? It started off from a log cabin. I wanted to build a log cabin. I didn't know who to build this log cabin, so Colonel Jamal brought in Pat Jong, his name, from Africa. So he started drawing, 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 drawing. I didn't like any of his drawing. Now, what is he doing? Patrick Jonk, an engineer by trade, was just going with the flow. After all, he had stumbled into architecture and design by accident. And that suits Sultan Ibrahim just fine. He just basically gave me free range. And that's how we've gone from there. It's just very much a gut feel. I listen to what His Majesty is after, and then I just take it from there. It just so happened that the Sultan had some material waiting to be recycled. He went to see the railway slippers I have. I've got 35,000 at that time pieces. He came back to me and said, that is gold. It's better than gold. In Africa, it will cost 700 US per piece. But since you have 35,000, let me build you a Flintstone house. That's how Flintstone came into the picture. Sultan Ibrahim has big dreams for his pet project. I will open it to public. Uh, surrounding, untuk bergambar. I think even movies will be taken there. Shots will be from Hollywood. Because the words are spreading now to America that this is the eight wonders of the world. This is my Taj Mahal. And this is my gift to Johor. Sultan Ibrahim has lived in Istana Pasir Palangi some 30 years and brought up his family here. In the vast grounds, he has his polo field, stables, and some of his car collection. The Sultan has many cars, but it's the classics that are closest to his heart. For the coronation, some of those cars will be making an appearance in the motorcade. Sultan's favorites is the Mercedes 600. With powerful engines and deluxe interior, these cars are meant to be owned by royalty, celebrities, and heads of state. The open-top Landelay version is extremely rare. Only 59 were ever built. The Sultan will go to his coronation in one of these. It's maintained by a royal retainer 
who has served three generations of sultans. Mangku ni dia minat kereta daripada dia saya, yang saya perhatilah daripada dia remaja lagi. Daripada dia remaja dia dah minat kereta. Dia dah minat kereta. Kadang-kadang kereta-kereta lama tu dia bawa balik, dia cantikkan balik. And he's the only one the Sultan trusts to prepare the precious Mercedes 600 Landolet for the coronation. Saya rasa itu macam satu bukan bukan satu tanggungjawab tapi macam satu penghargaan dia bagi kat saya kan. Saya, saya kira saya ni dah ke tepi dah tak ada apa lagi kan tapi tuanku masih ada bagi peluang lagi lah untuk bawa dia kan. On the way back to his palace, the Sultan comes across the police escort, training for coronation motorcade duty. The motorcade will be a slow-moving affair to give people the chance to see the Sultan. But the lack of speed is causing problems. At 1700 cc, the big heavy bikes are built to go the distance at high speeds. Holding the powerful engines on low gear is going to really test the outrider's skills. They'll have to give it their best shot. Sultan Ibrahim has a lot more to do before the coronation. He has to grace functions, check on rehearsals, and make sure his clothes fit. In the next few weeks, the Sultan and his team will have to hit high gear.